we're hitting refresh on some classic refreshments. I've never had a donut like this in my entire life. This is not the stroganoff that I grew up with. Right. I've had crab rangoon before, but never like this. So this is like being a kid again, right? It's all your old favorites. Not how you remember them, but better. Wow, like really wow. Hold on. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat the whole thing right now. This is the most flavorful thing I've had in my mouth. This is a remix. Welcome to Food Paradise Retro Remix. On the outskirts of Denver, Colorado, adventurous food fans are following the bouncing ball to the ball joint. Owners Amanda and Brian Fiock want you to feel right at home in this neighborhood spot, which is easy since it's in a home in the middle of a residential neighborhood. We have people, come, like drivers, come to pick up food for delivery, and they're like, what? This is a restaurant? They, they can't believe it. And not just old-fashioned meatballs. Pretty much any entree or dessert you can name, they've served it in orb form. Meatballs, chicken balls, gyro balls, Philly cheesesteak balls, you name it. But the signature meatball here is the one he learned to make as a kid from his Italian great-grandma. Unfortunately for me, my great-grandmother, my Mimi, as we called her, did not write down recipes. So I did the best I could to figure out how to recreate the meatballs that we had on Sundays. Those Mimi-inspired meatballs star in creative dishes like the Toscano Ballrito. It's a mix. It's Mexican and Italian. Yeah, it's the best of both worlds. We're making our signature meatballs. They're a 50-50 beef and pork mixture. We're gonna take the ground chuck, ground pork, breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs actually hold the juices in. If you cook a meatball without breadcrumbs, all the juice will be on the pan. Then it's milk, salt and pepper, garlic, onion, and just a smidge of cayenne pepper. One thing about cayenne is it makes the taste buds dance. It's not about making things spicy, it's just getting that reaction on the tongue. Some fresh basil is next. Then Brian takes a hands-on approach to ensuring everything is well mixed. He rolls up the perfect palm-sized balls, loads a trayful, and pops them in the oven to cook for 12 minutes. Instead of, say, a red chili Colorado sauce, this burrito is smothered in a hearty marinara, which begins by sauteing garlic and butter very carefully. If Mimi saw me burning the garlic, she would say, what's the matter, you? Mamma mia. And then she'd give me a fungadella. Fungadella, grab my cheeks and give me a kiss. It'd be okay. He deglazes with olive oil, adds peeled Roma tomatoes, and the same spice blend as the meatballs. A bit of simmering, a few whirs of the blender, and I'm calling it. That's officially a marinara sauce. We're gonna go ahead and assemble our Ballrito Toscano. It's not a Ballrito without meatballs. Before we close it up, we're gonna put a little sauce inside because you need that extra sauce. Here comes another one, house-made garlic zing sauce. It's just what it sounds like. It's a lot of cream and a lot of garlic. He rolls the Ballrito, douses it in marinara, piles on a bucket of shredded mozzarella and a few Roma tomato slices. Now we're gonna put it in the oven and melt the cheese. Minutes later. First, we put our Italian-style pico de gallo, our Italian cheese blend that we mix in-house, and there we have it, the Ballrito Toscano. This remix is ready to roll. I'm ready to dive in. Fantastic, that cheese and just melts so well. The meatball just melts in your mouth. I thought the red sauce was really surprising in a burrito, but I think it's fantastic. That pico really kicks it up a notch. Part of my family is Italian, so I'm getting all those flavors that I remember growing up as a kid around them. This is the most flavorful thing I've had in my mouth. Ball joint in Colorado makes flavor forward food that really takes you back. It's almost a combination of back home and new home, and it makes me really happy. <laughs>